all with a giant thumbtack pressed through his chest. The fact that our main source of light here is Barrick's burning sword adds a nice touch. And as mentioned, Barrick declares that it's a message from the Night King as we see that there are dismembered human arms that make up the shape of a spiral around young Ned's body. As they are examining the display, they talk about beating the army of the dead back to Winterfell using the Night Watch's horses. It's a gruesome scene that points to a symbol we've seen the White Walkers used before. And things get even more crazy when over Tormund's shoulder the boy starts to struggle and scream. This is a little confusing as to why it appeared as if the changing into being a white happened right at this moment. I think it's possible that it just made for the most dramatic and horrifying scene to depict it like that so I won't go down any rabbit holes here. Either way, Beric uses his burning sword to stab the body and that leads to the entire spiral going up in flames and creating this awesome, if not horrible, looking image. The kind of image that ends up burnt in your memory, pun intended. Been thinking about what this means, how it plays a part in what's to come, and what we're supposed to take away from it with mixed results. I was reading everything and I read several takes from different perspectives and I watched an interesting video from the Joe Magician channel. Those things all inform my thinking here. If you look at my Twitter feed, you can see all that stuff there. I was going through a bunch of different things. I feel pretty solid about how this plays a part in what's to come in the next episode at least, but I'm torn between a couple ideas as for what it means for the end of the story overall. Let's take a quick look at the symbol itself and who has seen it before we get into that. We get our first introduction to the White Walkers in the very first scene in Game of Thrones. In that scene, we see Men of the Night's Watch come across the wildling camp where everyone had been killed and the bodies were displayed in a ritualistic way. The arrangement looks similar to the Greek letter Phi. Not a spiral, but there is a mathematical relationship between these two symbols. Phi is used to represent the golden ratio and there is also something called the Fibonacci spiral, a golden spiral whose growth factor is Phi the golden ratio. I really only have a pseudo intellectual understanding of this since I have no background in math, so I'm not going to try to wow you with my googling skills here. Instead, I will just tell you, when asked about these symbols, the showrunner said that they didn't really mean anything, but they did this to show that the White Walkers were thinking beings rather than just mindless ice zombies. We see an actual spiral made out of dead horses when Jon Snow and Mance Raider arrive at the Fist of the First Men. Mance says, always the artist, when he sees the display. In this instance, we know that Oral saw dead men from the Night's Watch when he skin changed his eagle and flew above the scene. They were raised as whites in the Army of the Dead and the spiral of horses was left to send a message. After that, we see a spiral from Bran when he sees the creation of the Night King with the three-eyed raven in a weirwood vision. In the vision, we see a spiral of standing stones that spread out around the weirwood tree where the children of the forest create him. At this time, we see that the environment is lush, the tree is full of red leaves, and we catch a glimpse of the mountain shaped like an arrowhead in the background that comes into play in Season 7 when the Hound sees it in the flames. Later in the season, when he sees it in the north, they take that as a sign that they are close to where they need to go before the Night King and his army surround them on the frozen lake. We see this spiral in this location again when Bran jumps onto the weirwood net by himself and ends up getting touched by the Night King. At this point in the story, the area is a frozen wasteland. The weirwood itself looks frozen, which is a noticeable contrast to others we've seen in the north. The tree that is on top of the Three-Eyed Raven's cave, for example, looks vibrant and alive. We see spirals again in the dragon glass cave scene in season 7. As Jon shows Daenerys the cave, we see images of the White Walkers, spirals, and the Phi shows up back again alongside some other symbols. When Benioff talked about this in the after the episode, he said that the symbols weren't made up by the White Walkers, but by their creators, the Children of the Forest. He said these are patterns that have mystical significance for the Children of the Forest. We're not sure exactly what they signify, but spiral patterns are important in a lot of different cultures in our world, and it makes sense that they would be in this world as well. 
So there's a lot more that we could say about the symbols, but I think these are the relevant examples of the White Walkers using symbols to convey a message and where they come from. The characters who have seen them in these examples are all dead except John, Daenerys, and Bran. Those characters are all at Winterfell currently, and this leads me to the first conclusion about the spiral at Last Hearth. One thing I feel certain about is that Tormund, Beric, and Ed will describe what they saw at Last Hearth. This could definitely be a catalyst for Bran who has seen this pattern before. I was really surprised we didn't get a scene where we saw Bran access the Weirwood network in the first episode at all because it seems like that'll be necessary to do really soon as the Night King and his army are fast approaching. Since the forces defending Winterfell are in for the literal fight of their lives, and everyone else's for that matter, I have always thought that Bran will end up being the key to figuring out how to defeat the Night King. Now I imagine that when Tormund and the boys tell Jon what happened at Last Hearth, this will put things in motion. That part of this is pretty simple. They tell Jon that they saw this awful spiral display. He remembers he saw it before with Daenerys in cave drawings depicting the story of the Long Night. Remember, that's when the Children of the Forest and the First Men had to fight together to defeat the White Walkers the first time. And remember, the story goes that the Children of the Forest had created the White Walkers as a weapon against those same First Men. The Children were outnumbered, and the White Walkers were essentially a way to use the First Men's numbers against them. When they died in battle, the Night Kid could turn them into Whites to increase the strength of his own army. This information filters down to Bran. He can go into the Weirwood Net to look for information on how to defeat the White Walkers in present time. Of course, Sam could also play a role in this. He mentioned the books he stole from the Citadel in Episode 1, so those could come into play to aid Bran in his search as well. The second part of the question, what does this mean for the end of the story, is a lot more difficult to answer. Before I do that, I think it's worth saying that part of my original idea for making this video was that we were probably making too much of it. We were probably thinking about this a little bit too much. I mean, of course we are, because that's what we do, but there is a really good chance that the only reason they arranged the scene the way they did at the last hearth is because of what I just talked about. Bran needs that piece of information to help him learn what he has to learn to save the day. I feel absolutely confident that that part will happen, but at the same time, I started to get endgame ideas as soon as I saw it. Because this story is so rich and so complicated, it's really difficult to tie myself down to an overall endgame prediction. Instead, I usually think of things in compartmentalized ways, thinking about parts of the story and how they might turn out rather than the big picture. When I first saw this flaming spiral and made the connection that this will be helpful for getting Bran to do what I think his role in the end of Game of Thrones is, it's like dominoes starting to fall towards an ending I don't think is perfect but can live with. That would be that Bran has to take on the Night's King inside the Weirwood network, and that he probably has to destroy the whole thing to get rid of him for good. The end of the White Walkers is the end of magic itself. Of course, there would need to be a lot of personal sacrifice by the characters we love in the process of this happening. I mean, we know there will be a physical battle for sure, so I'm not suggesting that Bran figures this out, goes into the trees, and sacrifices himself so that that's the end of the story. There's no battle at all. This is a theory that's out there in different forms. In my version, I think John and Daenerys both have roles to play in the battle and the physical world that are necessary to the Night King's defeat. In this theory, it's possible that the Night King might just not want to be the Night King anymore. He may just want it to be over. We know from the preseason interviews with the actor that the person who the children turned didn't want to be the Night King and that he wants revenge because of that. It seemed like the show killed off the remaining children of the forest, which led me to believe that Bran was the Night King's target. Bran is by far the most connected character to the magic that created the White Walkers, so it seems like he would be the target of their revenge. Even if we remove those motivations and look at how showrunner David Benioff described him, where he said, I don't think of him as evil, I think of him as death. And that's what he wants for all of us. It's why he was created and that's what he's after. If all he wants is to kill everyone, this idea with Bran still works. He wants to kill everyone, and since Bran has knowledge that might be able to stop him, it would make sense for him to want to kill Bran. 
Beyond this, there are a range of theories about what the Night King wants. They cover a wide spectrum that goes from straight tinfoil to impossibly bad, to pretty fun tinfoil, to good, and to super interesting and fun. There's a million of them, a lot of which involve the Night King wanting someone to take his place, him wanting a Night Queen, or something to do with babies since we have the idea that White Walkers need them to reproduce. They can't reproduce on their own. Since I lean towards the idea that Bran has to actually defeat the Night King, I have never really adopted these as what I think might happen in the show. Most of the ones that are really well laid out are compelling, and there's a lot of good evidence to back them up. So they've always been theories I'd like to think about, but never really just took them on because I couldn't see the show going there. For this video, I guess the question is, was the spiral in the last hearth an actual message about what the Night King wants? Or is it just what they do as they carry out their destruction? We can't forget that we aren't likely to see any direct communication between the White Walkers and our heroes. Any exchange would likely have to happen on the astral plane or in vision. But I bring this up because the idea Joe Magician puts out in his video involves the Night King wanting a physical sacrifice. I won't retell his entire theory here because it's a good video and you should just go watch it for yourself. But what's important is that it's an ending of the type I just mentioned. I really didn't think the show would go that way, but there was an interesting thing Thing he pointed out that I found really compelling. When we first see these symbols, they appear to be viewed from the sky. The way they're arranged, they're in big shapes that you would see flying overhead. We know the children are the originators of these symbols. We know that the children had skin changers who used ravens and other birds, preferably, and he makes the connection that the White Walkers were making the symbols for them to see. Since we assume the show killed off the last of the children we are likely to see, it's really interesting that this symbol is on a wall for men to see. This does make me wonder if it's a message about what he wants. In other words, they were using this symbol to convey something to the children until there weren't any children left, and now they're using it on this wall as a symbol and a message to men. I'm not really sure how I feel about it from there. You can insert any one of those scenarios above into that and think about how that might play out in the show. Of course, the idea that John might be a replacement for the Night King is a popular theory. Of course, the idea that the Night King wants a bride is also a very popular theory. And we know that the Night King was taking babies from Craster, which he is no longer getting anymore, and that there's a big connection to this idea of the Night's King from the books, possible deals that might have had his babies going north for the White Walkers, and all of that stuff that you already know. All of these things could be what's going on, but I really find it hard to see them doing it that way. That's why I've always kind of fallen back to this idea that rather than there being a lurking Night King at the end of the story, that actually all magic would have to be destroyed, and that's where we would end up. It just seems to fit into the framework of the television show better. So to wrap it all up, I think at the very least, this symbol was used as a way for Bran to get keyed into what he has to find in the Weirwood net. I think I laid that out pretty good here, and I think we can all agree that that's probably going to happen. I tend to think that this means that what Bran finds is going to be something that involves him making a sacrifice and magic ending up not being the same, if not completely eradicated by the end of the story. One of the things that has sold me on this idea, and I don't really love it because I really kind of like the idea that used to be out there about Bran being the one at the end to still be in the Weirwood tree and him remembering the story being like the dream of spring, you know what I mean? I've been stuck on that idea for a very long time. The thing that kind of makes me get to this point, the idea of the rule of threes where, you know, things usually happen in threes in George R. R. Martin's writing. So you have Bran affecting what's going on by his father being able to hear him. You see him affect what's going on by warging Hodor and Hodor becoming Hodor. And then it kind of feels right that the third thing might be that he has to do this one more time and he's going to end up sacrificing himself in one way or the other in that process. But it's all just a guess. I mean, at this point, I do think with 